Hey, everybody. Final show of the FCS football season. I am your host, Matt Joseph, sportsmemo.com. And joining me, as he always does during this magic carpet ride, is Rob Vino, wagertalk.com. Rob, how's it going? It's good today, Matt. How about yourself? Uh, I'm going to try not to uh, to cry on the air today um, because <laughs> of my beloved JMU team uh, with the way that they yeah. uh, lost last week. And before we get to the game um, coming up this weekend, just your thoughts on the collapse by the Dukes. I mean, I was sitting there third quarter thinking, all right, James Madison, South Dakota State, going to be a great game. And then all of a sudden, special teams, which we talked about last week, uh, failed the Dukes. And it's just they they collapsed big time. Yeah, they really did, Matt. When you go back and just comb through it, it's an 11-play stretch. That's all it is. It's 11 plays where um, the Sam Houston State team puts up 28 points, a 69-yard touchdown pass, an 80-yard punt return, followed by a pair of JMU turnovers deep in their own territory that result in scores. And next thing you know, it's all over. Uh, First half, the way the first half closed, it was beginning to look like a mismatch. I know that you and I were DMing back and forth. And, <clears throat> you know, James Madison looked like it could do whatever it wanted to do offensively, run the ball, throw the ball. That touchdown before the half when um, when uh, Sam Houston knew that a deep pass attempt was coming, they still couldn't stop it. Uh, so going into halftime, you felt really, really comfortable, 24-3 JMU. And like you say, it was just an avalanche. It hit so quick. So hard, you look up, all of a sudden they're losing the game. They tried in the end to come back, but it fell short. Um, You know, I'm not sure that – again, Sam Houston State's done it three weeks in a row now, right? Uh, They win in a game against Monmouth where Monmouth was just about in their end zone to win the game, but they pick off a pass late, late in the game to win. Uh, Second game, come back with a late touchdown against North Dakota State. And then here they uh, come up with this spurt, I'll call it, because for the rest of the game, Sam Houston State didn't do much offensively. Um, It'll be interesting here to see what happens this week. But I'm with you. Uh, My biggest play last week was on James Madison, and I really couldn't believe how quickly the fortunes turned on the JMU Dukes. Yeah, and then, and then also with the field goal at the end, I know you have this long kicker that's going to kick sort of things, but he hadn't done it all season. You've got the Ethan Racky, who's 100%, and he doesn't come out, and that, that was a questionable decision. But uh, we move on because we've got our championship mm-hmm. game Sunday at uh, 2 o'clock, so let's uh, bring the graphic up. South Dakota State opened up as a four-point favorite, uh, the total 46. Uh, across the board, there's some four-and-a-halves lingering, some five-and-a-halves. Uh, total did go up a point to 47. There are some 47 and a half out there so if you are considering side total make sure to shop around because there is some variety here and of course remember this game is in frisco texas so it's going to be somewhat of a uh neutral field but of course sam houston state is closer between the two and rob i'll go back to this we we did the very first show of the year and we talked about south dakota state i believe it was the southern illinois game and we're sitting there because I like Southern Illinois. And we were talking about the South Dakota State quarterback situation. And then Gronowski wins the job over a couple of guys that were certainly capable of winning it. And ever since then, I mean, he's got 57.5 completion percentage. He's averaging 7.3 yards per carry. This is a South Dakota State team that's allowed just 10 sacks in nine games. They rush for over 230 yards. Um, and they just said their defense was so good against Delaware last week, although Delaware's offense was disappointing a lot of the year. So let's take the South Dakota State side first of this matchup, Rob. What are you looking at here from the uh, from the favorite? Well, you really want to see if their offensive line, which some would tell you is the best in FCS football, if their offensive line can uproot the Sam Houston State front seven. If that happens, Matt, it'll be a long day for Sam Houston State because they're dependent upon that front seven, one of the best, arguably the best in the nation. Um, And South Dakota State loves to run the football at you and do everything off of that. So we'll see. That'll probably be one of the biggest matchups in this game. That South Dakota State offensive line at times has just looked like a steamroller against opposing defensive fronts. So you talked about how many yards they average per game. They've got a pair of running backs here led by Pierre Strong that kind of get the job done in a thunder and lightning type of way. And then the added presence of Gronowski running the football and the style that he runs it with um, certainly adds to it. So that's the main thing 
offensively that I would be looking for out of uh, the South Dakota State offense versus uh, Sam Houston defense matchup. The other way around, I think you would look almost at the same thing. Sam Houston, although they're a spread um, bordering on air raid type offense, but it's run oriented. They'd rather run first and pass second, um, but it's a big chunk uh, type of offense. Can they uproot the South Dakota State defense, which, like you said, has been really good and actually had seven sacks last week against Delaware. Sam Houston State had five. So I think it starts in the trenches here, Matt. I don't think there's any other way to begin the fundamental handicap but other than looking at uh, what's going to go on in the trenches here. And if, especially if South Dakota State is able to move Sam Houston State, I think that'll be a big positive uh, for SD State. Now, I'll throw this other caveat in, looking at the weather for Frisco, Texas on Sunday. Now, of course, we're doing this on Friday, so things can change. But they are looking at heavy thunderstorms, rain, um, about 100% chance of rain. So there is going to be rain, it looks like. Uh, temperatures around 70 degrees, about 10, 11 miles per hour with regards to the wind. But well, as you said, both of these teams, uh, you know, they're going to look to run South Dakota State more. Um, but Sam Houston State, we do know that Schmidt is just a capable runner as well. So right. he's certainly somebody that's going to be elusive in the pocket. Yeah, there's no question about it. And, you know, that Toyota Stadium, Matt, it's a multi-surface. I went through this last year. They have a grass field. They also have a turf field. I believe grass field is used for this game, which means if it does rain heavily, um, you could see a lot of divots and maybe footing gets tough for these teams. The other side of the coin with turf, it could be more slippery than anything else, which would you know, it, generally speaking, it allows teams uh, passing games to be able to cut uh, quicker than defenders can can cut because the offense knows where it's going. So I think it's a grass field here, though. I'm 99 percent sure this is a grass field. So we'll see if we get heavy enough rain to where it digs the field up a little bit and causes some sort of problem there. But again, in that type of environment. I would think that South Dakota State it gets a little bit of an edge just because, to me, they're the more physical, more power-type team than is Sam Houston State, although they're extremely capable with their backs ripping off big um, chunks of yardage and with their quarterback, Eric Schmidt, like you said, capable of running as well. I just think that the power style may um, gain a little bit of an advantage in what could be a wet or, or muddy field. So, A, uh, what were your power rankings uh, for this game? And, B, we sit here on a Friday, Rob. If somebody wants to wager on this game, uh, is there, you know, do you anticipate line movement as we get closer to Sunday? I feel like a, a, a sporting event like this, most of the action is going to come either first when the line comes out, which we saw, as, of course, with uh, the money coming in on the favorite, and then the day of when people are like, oh, yeah, this game is today. So what would you do, Rob, if you are sitting here deciding on wagering in the game? Do you do it now? Do you wait? Which side would you wait? and Which would you fire on now? Yeah, this is a strange one, Matt, because I didn't anticipate the type of movement towards South Dakota State that we saw. I don't know about yourself, but the quick movement from four to five and a half at a couple of respected places um, seemed a little bit off to me. I had made this game uh, South Dakota State two and a half with my power ratings. Now, again, I know South Dakota State, and I, I tried to look this up. Maybe you tried to as well. I'm not sure what we have here, but South Dakota State, the fan base will travel. And obviously, seating is made available to their fans as well. I just don't know how many South Dakota State fans are going to get there. So I kicked in about a half a point edge for this game being in Frisco, Texas, and Sam Houston probably without me knowing exactly, probably being able to have the stands um, in their favor for this game. So a, a shade of a home field advantage toward them. That put it at two and a half. The game came four and now is pushed to five and a half. So certainly early money, whether it be a false line move or a true line move, I don't know either, but certainly early money has liked South Dakota State. If it were me, I would wait one more day. Um, I'd wait till maybe Saturday. Um, bop, bop, bop. I would say Saturday night on the East Coast and see if you see any movement at that point in time. If, if you like something already, there's no reason to wait, right? If, if you're in love with a play right now, play it now. Um, but I would think that there's still going to be some movement in this game. I'm just not sure that that quick burst up to five and a half was something that'll continue to rise. I think you may see some take back towards Sam Houston State here. 
Yeah, it will be interesting to see. Of course, FCS line moves are crazy from time to time, and there's always a reason for it. It seems like, and I know COVID's kind of going away and things like that, but that's always something I'm worried about on a Saturday. You know, did the last minute news dump, hey, who didn't travel to Frisco? Now, I'm sure both teams are already in Frisco, but uh, it's something that you might want to consider here. And, and look, it's also the fact of, Sam Houston State could be on borrowed time here. You, you know, you talked about it early with the the close game with Monmouth. And then, of course, they they shut down North Dakota State but give up a bunch of special teams points. And then James Madison has that huge second quarter and probably should have won the game. So you can either look at it two ways, Rob, that either this team is really lucky and they've got one more game to be lucky or – their time is running out, and finally, South Dakota State, the better team of the two, is just going to take care of business. Yeah, certainly the guys who made the the committee that made the seedings got it right. Right, we have the one and two seed, but in James Madison's case, or excuse me, in Sam Houston's case, um, they did defeat North Dakota State despite it being a down year. They did defeat James Madison, who. I think I expected to be in this championship game. So they've gone through a couple of formidable opponents, albeit on their home field each time, albeit with, um, I don't know, either a little bit of luck or a, or a quick spurt or however they've done it. They've done it. I said it last week, Matt. I thought they were on borrowed time heading into the JMU game. And at 24-3 to 3 at halftime, I was somewhat you know, patting myself on the back for getting a good read on that contest turned out to be the bad read. Um, but I could see um, South Dakota State, when you watch them, they're just powering right through opponents right now. And this will be the third consecutive. You know, let's point this out too, Matt, because in most instances, the FCS championship game has a pretty big time gap between the semifinals and the championship. I forget if it's two weeks or three weeks, but it seems to me that it's not played until January um, in most in a regular season for FCS. And here you've got uh, Sam Houston State playing three extremely tough opponents, three consecutive weeks. Can you get it done or is there some fatigue there after these draining victories? That's a big part of the situational handicap in this one for sure. Yeah, and South Dakota State coming off of a laugher last week, 33-3. to I mean, you figured that some of the guys got some rest in the third and fourth quarters. And, of course, there's always the live batting situation for a game like this. If you get a sense early on as to um, some success, maybe South Dakota State wearing down Sam Houston State with their run game, you could always live bet this game, too, if there are books out there that will allow it. Uh, certainly, you want to go to our websites. Uh, check out uh, Rob on wagertalk.com. I am on sportsmemo.com, and uh, we'll have plays in this game and many others. NBA playoffs are coming. Major League Baseball is continuing on. NHL, all that good stuff. And make sure also to, uh, to go to our live odds page, which are, you can find either on Sports Memo or Wager Talk, and go there and check it out. Because with a game like this, you're going to want to shop around and you're going to want to find out which books have the best numbers because every half point could make a difference for a contest like this. And before we uh, wrap things up, just want to thank everybody um, back in the studio for everything they've done for the show. And thanks to everybody who has watched the show. Of course, FCS football is a niche market. It, but Rob and I really like to talk about it. And without you guys watching it, we really couldn't do a show like this. So thanks once again. And hopefully when this season comes back around in the fall, maybe we're doing something like this once again. So um, for Rob Vino of wagertalk.com, I am Matt Joseph, sportsmemo.com. Happy oh, championship weekend in FCS football. We'll talk to you again soon.